for you. Yonder stands the sinner. He calls my name. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I almost got to see Tommy Bowen. I was supposed to go, and I forget what happened. I think the, the I think that was. Uh, Were there drugs involved? There might have been. <laughs> everybody, like my brother's band and stuff, everybody was going to go. He played at La Paloma. Oh wow, he yeah. played at La Paloma. La Paloma. God, that's uh, a small. That's when he, that's uh, Private Eyes had just come out, and he had been touring with uh, Teaser with. Michael Murata Walden on drums. Wow. And Stanley on bass and that black chick on like saxophone and Jan Hammer on tricky keyboards. Dude, what a legendary lineup. And one, yeah. I just wish he wasn't so fucked up when he gets in the purple. You know? Well, that's the thing, right? He, he was a better guitar player than what, than what you hear on all the live stuff. The live stuff is, 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 is horrible. Well, yeah, he was loaded. Out of it, dude. Out of his gourd. He's out of it, and they still recorded that shit, and still all those bootlegs fucking made it out, and all the bootlegs are just trash, dude. Yeah. It's just very, and they recorded bad, and they fucking the guitar rips, and you can barely hear it, and I think that was that was intentional. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, you listen to all that. Uh, was he just not playing well at all? Japan. Well, I mean, on the regular parts of the songs. Boards, but all the leads are oh. all fucked up. Look at Smurf come. <laughs> I will uh I will edit that out. Yeah. Oh S Smurf oh. just oh yeah, we're recording. Oh I didn't know that. For shizzle. No, no, you can talk crap. No, I don't care. Just bad. I don't think I need to describe this to anybody. This is pretty self explanatory. Is that an oil reciprocator? It's an oil sucker, brother. It's an oil sucker, yeah. It's an oil brother sucker. Oil reciprocator. Or the bottom of the barrel, let's move it up top type stuff. That kind. Let's, yeah. let's get it all up on your bearings let's and get shit. Get it all up in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guess the foot pounds, Guess folks. Guess the foot pounds, everybody. 18. 18 and foot pounds to go. Right. Hey, you're going to have Bob Dylan come in. Do some, yeah. do some voiceover on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Got Bob Dylan here, everybody. Yeah, if you're smart, you'd chase all these threads, but I'm not yeah, smart. I'm not very smart now, yeah, man. Oh. Yeah. Right, because the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. It's always blowing in the wind. Right. Blowing in the wind. Kind of like my last fart. Just like my last fart. Right. Right. Click. Knocking on heaven's door. Knock it. Yeah. Click. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, give gold to me. You know what would have been really smart? Is installing the connecting rods and pistons first before putting this on. But. Right. No, uh, that's no, okay. Back it out. Don't worry. I'm not gonna back it out. Like I'm gonna admit defeat, Rick. Come on. Well, you... I'll just make it more difficult on myself. Well, then why you do that? well, because I'm not very smart, Rick. Now you gotta flip it. Flip it good. Eh, don't worry about that. Gotta find the right bolt though to put in. Those two yeah, will go there. It, flip it good. Flip, flip it easy, uh, Kate. Go forward. Whatever. Move I've got head. I've got so many of these. But you can fix them. It's not too late. To flip it. To flip, flip it? it into things. Flip it good. Flip it real good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't even have a spring compressor, so. You know what that was? Uh, it's not a spring compressor. What's it called? It's called a... A ring compressor. So, oh, like, you know, because they're, yeah. I have no idea how I'm going to do that, but we'll figure it out. I could go rent a tool if I absolutely needed to. That's what I like to do is rent tools. Hey, internet, knock it off. There we go. 
So now we can flip the bitch over. And this is going to suck because this is, well, let's put it this way. It's heavy. And it keeps getting heavier. Which way are you flipping? This way. I got it. You don't need the help. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sure you got it, Paul. Perfect. I told you. It was a controlled fall. <laughs> no. No, that wasn't. That was pretty controlled. It was smooth. You greased it up. But yeah, let me all... tell you. Another microphone uh, failure here. So that's awesome. Anyway. So uh, at this point, Rick has taken off. And I'm looking up the specs to get the top intermediate and oil rings uh, set up properly. And those settings are going to be 11 thou, 35 thou, and 11 thou is the minimum. I'm going to go to 18 thou, 35 thou, and 18 thou. Uh, that way I can just run all the boost and not really worry about these rings pinching together and causing a massive catastrophic failure in the engine. So simple as uh, get it squared up in the cylinder. Uh, get your feeler gauge out, see how easy it slides in. This one is sliding in at 17. I probably left this particular one alone. So, you know, ballparks. Um, the goal is to get them uh, at the minimum spec and uh, move on with life. It's not too difficult a job, just time consuming. I actually kind of enjoy this part. There's something cathartic about it. This is just a quick time lapse, kind of showing the process. You start with the top ring, then go to the medium ring, or intermediate ring rather, and then the oil ring. Um, I'm just running back and forth to grab little tools, little things that will help me out during the process, but no big deal. Um, I'll get in depth in the next clip, which of course has lost audio, so <laughs> I'll have to talk to you over that one too. So as I said, I lost some audio again, but uh, here I am just twiddling my fingers on the block and probably pontificating about what my findings are. And in the next clip, I'm probably going to pontificate about my findings some more. But here I am holding the trapezoidal intermediate ring. Uh, when you get one of these ring packs in your hands, you can really see what's going on. Interstate McBee did a good job of showing what orientation goes where and all that stuff. So... As I said earlier, I'm going to have to file the intermediate ring and oil control ring a little bit. And so I grabbed the rustiest, crappiest file I possibly could find. And this is where I'm showing you how I go about it. And this is the first one I did, and I was kind of stupid. And I should have just taken it from one side, uh, but I eventually flip over to the other side and do it as well. And I, I learned my lesson, so I decided against that in the long run. And I grabbed a better file that was easier to do this with. And they make actual tools for this and I don't have one and I don't see any reason for it for me personally so I did it the hard way okay so the top ring was in good shape it was at 18 thou uh, and that was fine you can see that there you can't really see the gap obviously the middle ring was at 18 as well and it had to go out to 35 I went just over 35 35 is the minimum spec and the oil control ring was at, I think, 11. Now, 11 wouldn't fit in there, but I decided to move it up to 18. Uh, max is 30. So this should give a good tight seal. Uh, the top ring being closer to the top of the spec is supposed to be good because that's I think that's the ring that gets the most jam in it. Uh, I want to keep this piston on number one. It's going to go in here. Um, but I'm going to get the, the connecting rod in here, and I'll take you guys over here, and I'll show you how uh, to assemble the connecting rod in here. I can't remember where the big end goes. Oh, well. We'll figure that out in a second. Okay. So orientation is down and to the right as the front of the engine. So it goes like that. So there's the front of the engine. You see how these guys are pointing that direction? That's the way that gets oriented. And then the front of the engine's this way. So that's the right way. So that's how that goes. Okay. And orientation's right. Top of the piston says front. And there we go. 
I got the wrist pin in. I need to put the snap rings. Uh, if you're at all watching this just for giggles, well, I'll show you how a snap ring works. So this is what a snap ring is. And this just goes in here. Easier said than done. Probably using the wrong tool. And they are snap ring pliers, but there's a bunch of them available. But this just goes inside there. And there you go. One on each side. Mud tires. Yeah. There we go. Now we're in. This rocks freely. Front of the piston. And we're good to go. I need to put my new bearings in. I don't know what you're looking at. Are you looking down? Yeah. So, connecting rod bearings get loosed up. Probably a 13. Now they're 12. Ah. Let me go get a 12. Be right back. Do you love it when you just reach for the wrong tool, like always? <sighs> Torque wrench is the wrong tool. But I don't care. Good Lord. That must have been my machine shop. So these are cracked rods. I have an earlier 6BT that has the machined rods. And the way you can tell is you see how that's cracked. It's not perfectly flat down here. If it was machined, it would be perfectly flat, but those are difficult. So they did this so that, uh, you could just, the manufacturing process, I guess, is easier. But only one cap goes with one rod, and so on and so forth. So, all right. So, we're going to take off the cap. Got my new bearings out already. Got a little trash go through it. It wasn't too terrible. There's the new one. It's going to fit in there. Oh, the other way you can tell you have a cracked rod is this isn't a fully smooth surface. So I'm going to look on these and see if there's a distinction. They're just standard size bearings. My crank didn't need to be turned, so I'm happy about that. And they're the exact same part. Exact same part number. So... Unlike the crank, there is no top or bottom half. No big deal. Old one can go away. I will clean that up a little. It doesn't need to be oiled from what I understand. I'm just going to ignore those marks. <laughs> there we go. That's half of it done. P 
people say, yeah, these are standard as well. Oh, this one says upper. Interesting. My new bearings don't distinguish between the two. Yeah. It's funny, you can tell how tight the tolerances are. Can you see that? Let me get behind the camera. The writing is imprinted on this. And this is the bottom of the cap, so it takes the most force. So the bearing is wearing like this, so that, that the forces of the piston are going down. And so when that hits, it's shoving everything down like that. And that's why the bottom of the cap has that writing on there. Hilarious, huh? Anyway. Wrong way. Oh, you know what? These are all... I forgot. Half the package is upper. And half the package is lower. I forgot. So on the box it will say... Green I know. Yeah. Three eight oh and three nine oh. Who knew? So I'm gonna set that one up over there. That's one complete half. We'll just set that down. Those two. So there is a distinction between the two. I'm just not that smart. Not that I'm not that smart, but you get the point, I think. Yeah, Edo. So I think Edo is the lower. Yep. There we go. That cap is ready to roll. Anyone know who Sloppy Mechanics is? My guess is not if you're in a diesel fan. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the crank just to get this out of the way. And uh, got the piston towards the front. Like I said, that's oriented that way. So I'm going to sit this in here. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of orient the rings. They're supposed to be 120 out from each other. That's probably good enough. I don't know if you can tell. So this oil control ring is not lined up with here. That'll go like that. See the gap there in the top ring. Top ring's right there. So I'm okay with the orientation. I'm gonna set this in here. And I don't have one of those tools. So I'm going to do it the really hard way and just push on those sides and hopefully this will start to drop in. And the way I'm going to do it is with a couple screwdrivers. I've seen Sloppy do it. And I'm sure he's cringing if he ever watches this, but that's okay. So the reason why this worked out for Sloppy Mechanics is that he was working with clapped out LS motors that already had a ton of miles. I think these are really tight 
New Springs, and I doubt he would do this on New Springs. So it's just really, uh, this isn't the right way to do it. It might get smarter later, and you'll see it in the next clip. It's fiddly. Hopefully I'll get this in without breaking anything. So I'm a smart man. <clears throat> Audio quality changed because I have to charge the thing. Phone. So, uh... I'll try anything once. And if I fail, well then it's a lesson learned. In this case, I was having no luck doing the screwdriver trick. So, I went and bought this at AutoZone, it was 20 bucks. Uh, and this will cover pistons from two and an eighth up to five inches. Mine is just over four, so this should do the job. Theoretically, it's obviously far too small. But it looks like what it does is this. Oh yeah. I mean, is it perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. Kind of a ratcheting mechanism. Hey. Yeah. Get you in here, you can see what it's doing. Although, no doubt you've seen this before. It's going to take a lot of tightening to get it down, but it tightens it, squeezes those rings, and gets it in there so that. You can just punch it through. You know what's also helpful? Is if you get all of the ring. There we go. I'm gonna hold it down while doing it. Yeah, I'm using used motor oil. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> there it goes. All right. That that was worth twenty dollars, guys. I ain't gonna lie. That was worth the twenty dollars. Fucking sick. Pardon my French. Well, no one cares. So I'm just gonna march on. Uh, sizing up rings, um, getting the pistons in there, and then when uh, we get the connecting rods hooked up, I'll flip the block over and I'll show you how that goes. It's going to be heavy. Whew. It's going. All right, so we got all the pistons in. The rods are in there. I just need to get them all lined up and start getting the... Yeah, uh, the crank turned. Yeah, I got to get that thing in there, so...